Hi, I'm uh, Josh Melby, uh, District Wildlife Manager for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. Hi, I'm Trent Burke. I'm our Grasslands Habitat Coordinator for Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I'm going to go over uh, some basics on uh, on cleaning birds um, and how to properly uh, to clean a pheasant. Um, one of the first things to consider is um, making sure you're legal. Uh, we come across lots of people in the field that um, have birds that that don't meet the uh, the legal regulations. So um, the biggest thing to consider is when we check you in the field, um, we need to have a way to identify this bird is a rooster um, and make sure it's not a hen. So there's three things you can leave on this bird um, to to fulfill um, the legality requirements. Uh, the first is a fully feathered wing or a leg with a spur on it or a fully feathered head. So um, I typically prefer the, uh, the leg um, just because it is uh, smaller it's easier to fold up and and put in the bag there and then you don't have to deal with any of the feathers and stuff okay i'm going to show you two different ways to uh, process these birds on a cold day like this you don't need to field dress them right away early season like opening weekend might be a different deal but it was a nice cold day today so we're just able to keep them in the back of the truck to get some air circulation uh, to start with so with this bird i'm going to demonstrate a uh, pretty standard method i'm going to leave the leg with a spur for the uh, evidence of, a, of the rooster on this one. And what I tend to do is I'll come in here and take the wings off first with a good pair of game shears. And I'll come back, this bird has one of the legs is damaged, so I'm gonna remove that one. And I will leave the uh, other one on there for evidence. So I'll leave that on. What I typically will do, uh, Lots of ways that you're going to cook pheasants. You can pluck them, but it's kind of tough to do. It's really easy to tear the skin. Uh, the way that I generally like to cook them is I'll cook the breast separate from the legs and the thighs. So with that method of cooking, uh, you know, low and slow on the legs and thighs, hot and fast with the breast, I'll usually go ahead and skin the bird. So you can just come up here right by the crop and tear it, and you'll see this bird was feeding in corn. We are next to corn, so that's what that bird was feeding on. And then you can just skin the bird back. You want to take your game shears and cut right through the base of the neck. And remove the head. We'll generally peel fairly easy here. Again, you want to make sure that you leave that leg with the spur naturally attached to the bird. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll come in right here at the base of the tail. You'll feel there's a little notch where it goes from the body and the spine down to where the base of the tail is. And then you can just take and nip right through there. And then you've got a bird that's fairly clean and ready to go. At this point, it's really easy to see what you're doing. And you can just take either a small pocket knife or your game shears, and you'll want to go right in here at the base of the kill, at the bottom of the breastbone, and there's kind of the uh, muscles around the, the stomach or the abdomen. You can just cut through there, just real nice and gently. A lot of times you can just get your fingers in there and kind of pop it open. You get the bird like that, and then you can just reach in with two fingers. There's the heart. And you can just grab everything and roll it right out of the carcass. And then at this point, you can do some final cleanup at home. But there you've got a perfectly legal bird that's ready for a, you know, storage in a cooler or something like that to transport once you get home. You can take it all gently, run them under the water, clean everything out, remove the rest of the feathers. And then once it's home at that point, you can remove the leg with the spur. Yeah. So that's the first method. Right. One thing to add, um, with the leg on there, it doesn't fit very well, like in a gallon Ziploc bag. Um, but if you go to the, uh, Charlie, no. Go to the back of the leg here, and you just cut through the back of that tendon, it'll release the pressure on that leg, and that leg will fold up like that, and now it'll fit in a gallon Ziploc baggie. Um, and it'd be a lot easier to transport in your cooler. 
Okay, I'm going to show you a second method on how to clean birds. And a lot of folks like to take the tail and the rump feathers off a rooster pheasant. They're real pretty. They like to take that as a uh, momentum, memento of the hunt. So I'll show you real quick how a good way to do that. Uh, and very similar to how we cleaned the other bird, is I'll take the wings off. And then if you'll come right here about where the wings end, you can start to skin the bird right there. And it works a little bit better if you put a little, a little nick in here. And then you can get back underneath that skin and you want to make sure that if you're wanting to keep this that you don't uh, screw up those rump feathers and you just sort of skin that back nice and gently right back to where the spine and that tailbone meets again okay at that point you can just snip through there that one and then you can just take that at home, put a little borax on it, pin it down to a piece of cardboard, and you can make you a real nice tail fan. Okay, at that point it's gonna be real similar to how we did the other bird. I'll leave one leg with a spur on it, and then I'll skin the bird. Okay, and I'm gonna show you a slightly different method for removing the entrails on it. Uh, makes it real nice and easy. You'll see here's the spine of the bird. You'll take your game shears, and if you just go in right on either side of the spine, and you can just clip that all the way back, and then go down the other side of the spine, and you can clip that all the way back down. And then you can just grab the spine, remove it, and all of your, uh, all of your organs are, are right here. There's the, the heart, the liver, the gallbladder, the uh, gizzard, and the intestines. And then at that point, you have a uh, very clean bird. Uh, if there's a bird that shot up bad, particularly if you shot the bird in the intestines, you'll want to take like a bottle of water or something, clean that out right away. This bird's not shot up too bad, uh, and so it's good to go. I would probably just take this. Uh, you know, clip the tendon like Josh was showing you earlier to make sure that you don't go all the way through it's where that'll fold up. You can put that in a Ziploc bag and put it in the cooler and you're good to go. And then when you get it home, just rinse it off and you're good to go. Uh, and again, when it comes to the uh, cooking methods, generally the legs and thighs, I'll cook them in a stew or a soup or something along those lines. Whereas the breast, there's lots of really good ways that you can make that. Uh, one of my favorite ways is just uh, battered and fried in a uh, Zatarain's fish breading, works really well on pheasant. Uh, crushed up Ritz crackers, works really well. Uh, you make schnitzel with it real easily, that comes out great. Uh, pheasant parmesan, there's lots of really good ways to use it. Uh, one of the best meals that you can get and really adds a lot of enjoyment to the pheasant hunt. Even though it's a cold day today, I'll show you something that you can do when it is warm and when it's hot out there where you might want to just real quickly field dress the bird and get the guts out of it. And you don't have to go through the whole skinning process or anything like that. You can just come in here. You can actually just use your fingertips to do it, but I'll go ahead and use the game shears. And you just make a small incision back there. You can fill the base of that kill and just start to pry everything open. And then you can put your fingers in there and just pull everything out. Uh, you'll get everything but the crop. The crop is, is up here on the front, but you can reach in and remove most of the uh, most of the innards in one pretty quick step. And then on a hot day, early season or something like that, it's worth taking a few minutes to do it. And in particular, if you're hunting other upland bird species, sage grouse in particular, uh, I always just take uh, a few gloves with me 
And as soon as I kill a sage grouse, I'll just clean it right away. Uh, on that bird in particular, it helps the uh, table quality out quite a bit. It's generally early September and it's hot. Uh, and then with what those birds are eating, it's uh, important to get them cleaned right away. But as you can see, that takes just a few seconds. You take care of it, put it back in, and the bird's ready, you know, good, good, good to go and, and ready to take home with you just like that. Uh, but you've got the, uh, the organs out that might potentially despoil it, particularly if you've got a bird that shot up bad. If you've shot a bird bad in the intestines, it's worth going ahead and getting that out of there during the uh, early season when it's, uh, when it's hot. So yeah, one of the uh, real advantages to this method, particularly if you're on a multi-day trip or something like that, is it keeps the bird clean. You don't have to get it bagged up in plastic. You can uh, all oftentimes do this with birds and just pack them on ice in a cooler. Uh, it keeps them clean, it keeps any you know, dust, dirt, or debris, or anything that you might have going up and down the road off the bird. It keeps it completely sealed up and moist. Uh, the package that they came with, I guess, is what you're keeping them in. Uh, and it works out really well. Uh, and birds like this, not at all uncommon on a multi-day trip. You know, pull the guts out of them, keep them cold. You can keep a bird like this in a cooler for four or five days, no problem. One last thing to mention here is once we've got all these birds cleaned, um, it's always good to get them cleaned in the field and uh, get them taken care of so that meat's gonna be the best you can have it when you get it home. Uh, but one thing that we need to take care of is we've got all these feathers and uh, organs out of the birds. Um, a common complaint I hear with landowners, and I've heard a lot of landowners that don't let anybody pheasant hunt anymore because they come across piles of pheasant carcasses on their properties, especially walk-in properties, any public hunting properties. When the landowner drives by and sees a bunch of pheasant feathers laying on their property, um, they, they usually don't like that. So you need to make sure you pick all these up, throw them in a bag, um, take them, put them in a trash can. Um, that way, chances are that property is going to remain open for pheasant hunting in the future. I don't have to wear gloves. I typically do just because it makes it a little bit nicer, particularly if you're going to continue to hunt or have a sandwich late or something like that. You know, bring water with you, but these gloves are cheap and easy. Uh, I always have them. It just makes a, the task a little bit more pleasant. Uh, and then generally with uh, birds, it's not an issue, but like uh, other small game mammals, particularly like rabbits and stuff like that, there can be some issues with tularemia and a few other things. Uh, and it's just, it's a good practice to just do it. I just get in the habit of doing it. Uh, combination of convenience and then just if there is something there, you know, it's not, not at all uncommon for wild critters to have, you know, parasites like tapeworms and stuff like that. And just, you know, very low risk of it being a human health issue, but uh, certainly makes the, uh, the task a lot more pleasant for you. Uh, and then if there is any potential risk factor there, it completely mitigates it. We hope you have a good pheasant season and uh, stay safe out there and uh, get to put this to use um, after you've been out in the field.